Commissioning of Kundanglum Nuclear Plant Delayed Commissioning of a controversial planned nuclear plant in, in the state of Tamil Nadu has been delayed by a few months, officials have told the reporters. Kundanglum Plant Chief Surand M.K. Balaji said the delay was due to a public protest at the site which had disrupted building work. He said that the site had been subjected to a total blockade by protesters since 13 October. Protesters say the facility is unsafe and is an earthquake-prone area. Okay. They fear a repeat of the disaster at Japan's Fukushima plant, but officials say it is a low seismic activity area. The nearly $3 billion plant, which has been either under design or construction for two decades, is equipped with two reactors with Russian assistance. Definitely there is a delay, Mr. Balaji told reporters. We have completed hot turns in August and are in the process of completing inspection work, but the public agitation had disrupted our work. He said there would be at least a three to four months delay in commissioning the first part of the plant, and because of the second part also is likely to be behind schedule. Mr. Balaji strongly denied media reports that Russian scientists at the plant were planning to go back home because of the continuing protests. He insisted that it was safe and there was no responsibility of radiation leak, although still no decision has yet been taken on where to store nuclear waste. The government insists that no waste will be kept at Kundangulam. On Monday, the former Indian president and the scientist APJ Abdul Kalam on a visit to the plant said that it was fully safe. He said it was equipped with sophisticated safety features and there is no need to panic. Mr. Kalam said that he was neither a mediator nor a government employee but a technologist. I support nuclear energy along with solar and wind power as it is clean and green energy which is very much required for the country's rapid growth, he said. But protesters said they were disappointed with Mr. Kalam's support for the plant. It is a, uh, more than 99 percent. Now it's very difficult uh, to uh, precisely say it, but it is definitely much more than 99. I wouldn't say, uh, and uh, you see, problem is that a lot of job uh, uh, should be repeated because a lot of uh, uh, responsible testing and uh, checking was interrupted uh, uh, before they were finished. India Telecom's corruption trial underway. The trial in India's biggest corruption scandal has begun in Delhi with the questioning of the first witnesses. The scandal involves the alleged selling of mobile phones frequency licenses for a fraction of its value. Former Telecoms Minister A. Raja and MP Kanimuri are among 17 people from telecom firms or government who have been charged. All deny any wrongdoing. Auditors allege this mis-selling of the licenses cost exchequer nearly $40 billion in lost revenue. Last month, the Federal Central Bureau of Investigation, CBI, framed charges against the 17 people, including criminal conspiracy, forgery, accepting bribes and misuse of office. The trial in a special CBI court in the Indian capital is expected to be long and complex. It began with the complaints from lawyers that the room was too small to take defendants, lawyers, family members and the press. We'll move on the business world. Gaithner urges Asia-Pacific economies to spur growth. U.S. Treasury Secretary Timothy Gaithner has urged Asia-Pacific countries to increase efforts to restore growth to the global economy. He was addressing finance ministers from 21 countries that are members of the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation (EPAC) group. Mr. Gaithner also pressed Europe to put in place strong plan to resolve its debt crisis. The comments come ahead of a summit of EPAC leaders in Hawaii. We are all directly affected by the crisis in Europe, said Mr. Gaithner. 
But the economies gathered here are in a better position than most to take steps to strengthen growth in the face of these pressures from Europe. Many countries within the EPEC groupings such as China and Indonesia have experienced rapid economic growth while the US and Europe has been growing slow. Welcome to the world of science. Idea fine for spying Greenpeace nuclear campaign. A French court has fined energy giant EDF 1.5 million euros and set two of its staff to jail for spying Greenpeace campaigners. The company is hoping to build four nuclear reactors in the UK. A court in Nantara near Paris found that EDF employed security firm Cargus to spy on Greenpeace as it campaigned against new reactors in France. The court also sent two cargo employees to jail and handed Greenpeace 5 lakh euros in damages. Greenpeace campaign targeted in particular the new reactor being built at Flamanville on Normandy coast, one of the European pressurized water reactors, EPR, that EDF hopes to bring to UK. A delayed call in communications director for Greenpeace in France said the decision sent a strong signal to the nuclear industry. No one is above the law. The court heard that in 2006, Cargus consultants, then run by a former member of the French Foreign Secret Service, compiled a dossier on Greenpeace by means that included hacking into computer belongings to former campaign's head Yannick Hiedo. First of all, uh, in our thoughts with the people in Japan who are still struggling with the aftermath of uh, the devast devastating tsunami and uh, earthquake. And uh, it's even more sad actually and disturbing to see that uh, the same people need to struggle with uh, uh, a deep nuclear crisis that uh, is on the edge of uh, turning into catastrophe. And uh, again, this shows that uh, nuclear power is inherently unsafe. And uh, f because there is a deadly combination of failure of technology, natural disasters, and human failure that can bring the reactors to the edge of a disaster meltdown and a massive release of radiation. And in sports! ESPN coverage suffered for lack of live pictures. ESPN covered the student unrest after the firing of Penn State coach Joe Penterno as if it hadn't mastered this TV thing. So much of it was done by phone with reporters and analysts talking to studio anchors that they seemed to be trying to emulate Edward R. Murrow calling the London Blitz on radio. ESPN is many things but in primarily a bunch of television networks, yet the worldwide leader failed more than two hours to capture the visuals of the frantic night. To watch the news conference Wednesday at which Paterno was fired, ESPN used audio before shifting to the live feed from KYWTV, a CBS station. To see students marching downtown and static, uh, quickly overused, a shot of old main, the university's administration building, CNN shots were used. To watch Sue Paterna, Joe's wife, walk outside their house, ESPN took video from Comcast Sportsnet. When Joe Pat talked it to students, the local NBC station footage told the story. All but the news conference video looked to be tapped. All but the news conference video looked to be tapped. Where in the world was ESPN in the aftermath of child sexual abuse scandal that led to the indictment of Penn State's former defensive assistant coach Jerry Sandusky and ended in the Penn State careers of Paterno and the university president Graham B. Spanier? And before we close today's bulletin of news analysis, let's have a recap of the main points. New Greek Premier Lucas Papadimos seeks unity over Euro. 
US soldiers kill team leader Calvin Gibbs guilty of murder. Syria unrest human rights watch details harms abuse. U.S. Defense Chief Panetta warns against Iran strike. Afghanistan, mother, daughter, stoned to death in Ghazni. Commissioning of India Kundam Kulam nuclear plant delayed. And there we end today's bulletin of news analysis. Be with us in the coming weeks too. And you can be informed of the world happenings. Thank you.